Hello everyone, Emmy here, and welcome back to a new video. This is going to be part 2 of my site review for the set Supercharged Breaker. So we can kick things off with a new Annihilate line, and sadly once again Primeape and Mankey are not pulling their weight. Uh, Man uh, was it Primeape? Yeah, Primeape is the one with 110 HP, which honestly isn't too bad for a stage 1 that evolves again, so you know, that's nice to see. But Annihilate is kind of alright, you know, Tantrum can want to kill Terrapagos, funnily enough, so that's kind of cool. Uh, Destiny Fight, you know, you might want to use something like Crispin or EXP Share to power this up. But for Fighting in a Colorless, you can knock out both active Pokémon, which can be okay, but, you know, truth be told, against these very efficient basic EX decks, you might struggle to prize trade effectively, especially if they have access to a single prize attacker, which, to be fair, most decks do right now, so... Yeah, no, I think this will be a fun deck to try out at the very least, but I don't expect Annihilate to be, you know, crushing the meta or anything, but, you know, it seems like a fun card regardless. We also have this Paldean Taurus, which can stop um, defending Pokemon from doing damage to itself. Yeah, defending basic Pokemon can't attack. So that's kind of cool, I guess, but your opponent can also switch out and 90 damage just isn't really a lot. But, um, you know, maybe something for GLC. We have a new fan fee, which is very cute but uh, sadly has 8 HP, <laughs> so, you know, no Buddy Buddy Poffin, sadly. We have a new Don Fan, which is often, you know, the recipient of creative cards at the very least, but God Rolling does 120 damage, which is a bit subpar in this day and age. You have to discard 2 energy, and during your opponent's next turn, it takes 100 less. So, yeah, I would definitely say this is a pretty good GLC piece with stuff like Rock Chestplate. You'd be reducing quite a lot of damage at that point, but as for standard, you know, Nothing too crazy. Once again, you can want to kill a Terrapagos and not much else. So yeah, bit of a shame on Don fans' front. Then we have a new Gastrodon, which is very, very strong. I'm sure you've seen this card before. And very romantic artwork as well. Very sweet. But yeah, has the ability Sticky Bind. It says, if this Pokemon is on your bench, benched, stage 2 Pokemon in play, both yours and your opponent's have no abilities. So, you know, get to shut down the likes of Charizard, which will be very important. Things like Pidgeot as well, which is cool. Dusknoir is a bit more awkward because they can just ghost and carry you if they really want to. So, you know, that's going to be a bit more annoying to deal with, perhaps. But, you know, I can still see Gastrodon seeing a bunch of play. So, yeah, definitely a big thumbs up for me, personally. And then we have a new Glamora line yet again. One thing I will say, though, is this Glamora art is amazing. I love this artwork. Very, very cool. Crows of Shards isn't very impressive, though. Like, I don't think these attacks are very good, sadly. Like, your opponent can just evolve or switch out of them. But, um, you know, the artwork is lovely. <laughs> kind of cool for GLC, I guess. But, yeah, aside from that, nothing too crazy. We have a new Coridon with the attack Intense Assault that can do 180 if one of your other ancient Pokemon used an attack during your last turn. So this might be all right in Ancient Box, to be honest. But at the end of the day, like the other single prize Coridon, I believe can cap at 180. So, you know, I'm not sure if this is ever really replacing the other one, unless you're, like, certain that you're going to attack with another Pokemon before you do this. This can, of course, you know, skewer the prize trade like most other single prize attackers do. So, you know, you could, like, poke them with a Raging Bolt, and if you don't finish them off, you could definitely finish them off with 180. And then, you know, your opponent has to either gust around this or kill it. But at that point, you know, if your opponent does gust around this and they swing into something else, you can't then, you know switch into this and attack with it because you'd only be doing 30 at that point so you know it seems a bit niche but again definitely one to keep an eye on for sure then we have a new dno swellus and hydreigon so dno 70 hp in buddy buddy poffin range which is great and the s hydreigon ex definitely my most anticipated deck from the set for sure 330 hp dark type weak to grass so a bit of a problem against ogre pond hydrapple i guess Crash Heads for Dark Colorless does do 200, which is quite nice. And you get to discard the top three cards of your opponent's deck. So quite nice disruption. And then Obsidian. I'm assuming this will be translated to like Obsidian Fangs or Obsidian Heads for like the final translation. But yeah, 130 damage for a Psychic Dark Metal Colorless. And then you also do 130 damage to two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So I'm pretty sure you probably just want to focus on Crash Heads for the most part. And then, you know, finish off another Pokemon with Obsidian. So, you know, 200 leads quite nicely into 330. And then, you know, you just snipe or soften up two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So, yeah, definitely think Hydreigon will be usable at the very least. Seems like a lot of fun. 
We also have a new graffiti, or graffiti as it's called, like the new shrewdle thing. I don't know what's going on with this monkey, honestly. There's so many monkeys in the TCG at this point. Uh, mischievous Paint is pretty bad. You get to accelerate energy from your opponent's disco pile to your opponent's Pokemon, which is uh, pretty grim. Even if your main attack does more damage based on the amount of energy attached to all your opponent's Pokemon, I would still say just do not bother with this attack. It's just like giving your opponent free stuff. So yeah, the, the attack is all right. Like this one's okay, but that one definitely not. Definitely a cool piece of jealousy though. We have a new Pachurant, but it's not really new because it was released internationally as a promo. So, you know, it's a kind of a cool card and I'm glad that it gets like a regular slot in the set. So if you're playing IRL, then, you know, that's nice. But for Pokemon TST Live, you can craft it easy enough already. We have a new Duck Trio, which does look very fun. I love this artwork. It's so cute. But Triple Bingo for no energy does 120. And if you do not have exactly three cards in your hand, this attack does nothing. To be honest, in my personal opinion, this effect is like whatever that's easy enough it's just the fact that 120 isn't actually a lot of damage this day and age you know it hopefully with the next rule box mechanic be it like i don't know mega evolution or whatever they decide to do after the x's we get some like proper damage mods and then triple bingo could be good but as it stands right now it's going to be definitely on the budget side of things but you know still a cool card then we have a new bronzong which honestly is just a bit bland kind of a glc piece a new Eternatus, which is kind of cool. You know, you can poke EXs for 90 damage. And then World's End does 230 for a fire double dark energy. And you have to discard a stadium in play. And if you can't, this attack does nothing. So, honestly, seems like a lot of fun in Lost Box. You know, pair this up with the likes of Radiant Charizard, get Mirage Gate involved, discard stadiums like um, the Lost Zone Stadium. So, what, what is it called? Lost City or something? It's been a while since I've seen Lost Box, actually. But yeah, Turnitus definitely could be a nice piece there, and 230 is a lot, right? It's a lot of damage, Dynablast is okay, so you have to expect a Turnitus to see some use at some point. Tatsuguri, you can borderline skip this card, it's so aggressively bad, but Cinnabalder, you can look at the top 10 cards of your deck, choose any number of Pokemon you find there, put them onto your bench. You're forking out three different energy just to do this effect, it's honestly just more consistent to set up those Pokemon than it is, you know, to do this. Like, there is some cool Pokemon you can cheat out, like slacking only attacks for double colors. So, you know, there's definitely some cool synergy there, like Pidgeot, EX, of course, you could cheat out onto the bench. Maybe even your own Gastrodon if you wanted to. But, you know, just some interesting choices. But aside from that, you know, I definitely don't think Tatsuguru will be very good. Some fun decks for sure, but, you know, competitive wise, absolutely not. Get them out of here. Uh, we have a new Slack Off, a new Vigor Off, cool, whatever. Slacking EX is kind of cool, actually, tied for the most HP in the game currently, which is big. Has the ability Slacking Off. If your opponent has no Pokemon EX or V in play, this Pokemon can't attack, which is quite funny. And then Great Swing does 280 damage and discard energy from this Pokemon. So you do want to use basic energy, of course, not double turbo, because 280 to 260 is just so, so much worse. But Still, a very good attacker, I would say, in something like an Arceus deck, perhaps, or maybe even Lost Box, if you want to fit in Rare Candies. You know, that's something I would like to try out with Slacking, personally. But yeah, I definitely would say this is a much better card than Incineroar EX. When I played Incineroar EX, I kind of just wanted it to be one of those things where your opponent would overbench and you could swing for 250 or like 260 with a burn or whatever it was. This just feels way more consistent, to be honest. There's like a lot less single prize decks now. You know, Great Swings doing a lot of damage. Yeah, I could definitely see Slacking X being a pretty solid deck. We have a new Zangoose, which we can skip and just say, yeah, this is absolutely a GLC card. Kexilion is in a very similar spot. You know, 50% chance not to take any damage seems okay, but you just have to flip one Tails, and then you're effectively just doing 30 damage for double colors. So, yeah, Kexilion, not very good in my opinion. Buffalon is even worse. Skip his ass. Um, Heliusk is, yeah, Heliusk got his own video. <laughs> Orangaru. This one like can change your opponent's weakness to colorless, but like why are you not just doing a two shot at that point? You know, why use Orangu? So yeah, I'm not a fan of this guy, not gonna lie. We have a mouse hold with the attack family march just racing through the colors Pokemon at this point. But yeah, you can search your deck for up to two mouse hold or mouse hold EX and put them onto your bench, which is it's whatever, you know, it, it is whatever. Like the other mouse hold does more damage for each other mouse hold you have in play. So you have to like eat into how many mouse hold you play to play this one, which is really awkward. And then you also have to like compete with Tandem Mouse for Mouse Hold EX. So 
honestly, I don't think this card is very good, not going to lie. They keep pushing this deck, but I don't think it's very good. We've got Terrapagos with the attack Prism Charge, which, Prism Charge, which honestly actually seems really strong. Like I think this card is pretty good. So your deck for up to three basic energy of all different types and attach them to your Terra Pokemon any way you like. So, you know, power up the likes of Flygon, Hydreigon, even the, uh, what's it called, Tatsuguri, if you really, really wanted to. But yeah, honestly, seems like a pretty good card, you know? Which it costs to 2, 120 HP, pretty solid. So yeah, Terrapagos looks fairly strong. We also have a new item card and mystery set. Look at the top three cards of your deck, and you may put them back in any order, or shove those cards and put them onto the bottom of your deck. Seems okay, um, aggressively alright, it kind of reminds me of Pokédex to be honest, which probably isn't a good sign, but you know, it's okay, I think there's just a wee bit too much shuffle draw power that's actually really good for this to be important really, but not the worst thing I've ever seen. Scrabble Switch also seems really good, but I just can't think of a deck right now that actually wants to play this. You know, like, maybe Raging Bolt, but surely you just prefer Prime Catcher, so... Yeah, it's a bit of a weird A spec to print right now. Like, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, really. Uh, relaxing Teaser is just, like, whatever. It's the card that partners with uh, Meow Stick, but realistically, you wouldn't want to, like, donate four deck slots to this. Like, I just can't imagine you wanting to do that. It's an okay card, but, you know, it's just like, eh. If it was discard an energy, then maybe, but the fact that it's just back to your opponent's hand is, yeah, don't like it. We have Miracle Intercom, which I honestly think might be pretty good. Put up to two support cards from your discard pile into your hand. Really strong, to be honest, because, you know, you could pick up stuff like Roxanne and Iono. Play the Iono, and then you still have Roxanne for later. Or, you know, you could get back, like, a Roxanne and a Boss's Orders. Play Roxanne, and you still have the Boss's Orders for later on. So it's like a VS Seeker plus half a power pad, I guess, in some situations. Or, you know, you could just get two Boss's Orders and do a Boss Boss for a game if you can do it. So, yeah, honestly, seems pretty strong overall. Then we have Amulet of Hope, a last ace spec here, which allows you to search your deck for any three cards if this Pokemon is KO'd. So, quite funny with Raid and Jirachi, actually. That's a, quite a funny combo right there. But, you know, Lost Vacuum does still exist. And not every deck will play Lost Vacuum, and not every deck will have Lost Vacuum when they need it. But still, Amulet of Hope will, of course, be nerfed for as long as Lost Vacuum is still around. So, just something to bear in mind, but definitely not one of the worst ace specs for sure. Then we have Colba Berry, so damaged by an attack from your opponent's Charizard. This Pokemon takes 60 less damage from that attack, so could be good against Charizard, but to be honest, it is a one-use tool card at the end of the day, so honestly not sure if this will make too much of a difference. We have Bababiri, Bababiri, Babiri? I think that's how you pronounce it, Babiri Berry. Um, your opponent's metal, okay, metal, I thought this would be a grass thing, but no, okay, metal Pokemon do minus 60, so I guess they're, like, scared of Archalodon, maybe, from Paradise Dragona, which is also releasing Insurging Sparks, but, you know, okay, interesting, this is getting it printed, but, okay, whatever, We've got Tackle Machine, Fluorite, which, um, a Fluorite, so, yeah, so any Pokemon can use this, which is quite cool, but it costs a grass, water psychic, Discard all energy from this Pokemon if you do heal all damage from each of your Terra Pokemon. Honestly, don't think that Terra Pokemon are tanky enough to make use of this, to be honest. And it's just a wee bit too awkward for an attack cost. It's a cool card, though. Like, it is cool, but I don't think HP is actually at the point where, right now where it can compete with the amount of damage that Pokemon are doing. So, yeah, it's a cool TM, though. It's nice to see TMs come back. We have a Serrano. Serrano. Don't know how to pronounce his name. Search your deck for up to three Pokemon EX reveal and put your hand at whatever. Like, I guess Raging Bolt could play this. You could also play this in, like, Iron Thorns, you know, get the squad out. But aside from that, nothing too crazy. Clement's Quick Thinking heals 60 damage from each of your Lightning Pokemon. So, like, an aggressive counter to Cofagrigus for, like, Pikachu. But uh, nothing too crazy. Jasmine's Gaze, I still think is terrible. Amped Amphitheater, basic Pokemon to play, get plus 30 HP. That's honestly kind of cool, you know, like, I like this, but at the same time, you know, Raging Bolt gets a bit bigger, and that's always a bit scary. And then Gravity Mountain says the maximum HP of all stage 2 Pokemon in play is reduced by 30. So, you know, Pikachu can want to kill Charizard, guys, it is possible, and Dragapult, you know, so definitely a stadium card to bear in mind. But yeah, this has been a set review for part for the Supercharged Breaker, really, in part 2, so do let me know what you think about these cards down below, and yeah, thank you for watching.